Real Talk Radio. Niall Boylan on Classic Hits 4FM. We're talking about Ireland's constitution. And as you know, there will be a lot of constitutional changes over the course of the next couple of years. Uh, one of those changes suggested is that we should get rid of the blasphemy laws because they're outdated. Those laws, by the way, were updated uh, more recently. And we now can get a €25,000 fine. Stay there, Jimmy, because I want to go to Michael Nugent, who's the chairperson of Atheist Ireland. Uh, Michael, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, Michael, this uh, possible referendum on removing the laws of blasphemy, but replacing it with incitement to religious hatred, which kind of seems like the same thing, if you ask me. It's slightly different in, in, in that uh, blasphemy is a crime technically against God, and it, it, it's a silly crime because it's a medieval uh, theological crime that, that suggests that the creator of the universe, if he exists, depends on, on the, the Irish Parliament to defend his reputation. Um, incitement to religious hatred is already a crime, as is incitement to hatred on the grounds of sex or... or um, Colour of skin or whatever. Or, etc. And, and there's no reason to take any one of those existing crimes, which I think are, are appropriate to have there, and elevate just the religious element of those crimes and put that into the Constitution. And again, say, religious... Uh, hatred is more important than hatred on the grounds of being a member of the travelling community or being black or being whatever. Mm -hmm. so, so I think that the starting principle should be we treat everybody equally. The crime of blasphemy is both silly because, as I say, it's, it's a kind of medieval theological concept and it's dangerous because it incentivises people to be outraged by things rather than incentivising them to, to behave more proportionally when somebody says something they disagree with them. And also, it is being used by the Islamic states of the United Nations to defend their blasphemy laws. The fact that a modern 21st century Western democracy has passed a new blasphemy law has been used to defend their practices which involve killing people for blasphemy. I mean, it's quite, it's quite ironic actually that Pakistan looks at us for best practice when it comes to blasphemy laws. You would imagine uh, we're thinking ahead of those as certainly as a secular society. But Jimmy, on the other hand, who's on the other line from Wexford, who's been quite outspoken and religious on the show before, believes that if we get rid of these blasphemy laws, particularly when it comes to the state broadcaster, say for example RTE, and he doesn't have a lot of good things to say about them, he believes it'll be a free-for-all. The concern about Catholics, for, for example, uh, being offended by blasphemy laws. The Catholic Church is opposed to blasphemy laws because uh, blasphemy laws are used in Islamic states primarily to, to persecute Catholics and uh, non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. There's a woman called Afia Bibi who's currently facing execution in Pakistan who's a Catholic woman who, because she said something about Jesus uh, being more responsible that, that, than Muhammad, uh, is, is now facing execution. So, so blasphemy laws are used against Catholics. Mm -hmm. more than they're used uh, against, uh, against Muslims. And, and we're living in an interdependent world where what we do in Ireland has an effect internationally. And the big effect that we have there, the United Nations Human Rights Committee has told Ireland to remove this law. The OSCE, at the, I was over at the OSCE in Warsaw at a human rights meeting, we were again raising this issue of, of Ireland being the, the only Western democratic country to pass a new blasphemy law in the 21st century when every international human rights body is saying, go in the opposite direction, remove these laws. Okay, well, Say there a second, but Jimmy, you've heard that. I mean, we are the only country, basically, uh, I suppose, to upgrade our laws in the last three years, well, four years, um, basically increasing the fine just for uttering the words against God himself. Well, there's a difference between being an atheist and being a complete anti-Catholic. And I've heard Mr. Nugent speak before and uh, actually met him once. But I know his agenda, and good luck to him if he wants to camouflage it up. But you and I question if Christ himself was gay. <clears throat> I know that you're an advocate of the homosexual agenda. I've never once heard you on your radio show questioning homosexuals about the diseases associated with the practice of homosexuality. Do we? I do. Oh, well, hang on. Well, now, see, there you're wrong immediately because we did talk recently about blood donation and they, obviously the risk that HIV, people with HIV and people who are higher risk in the gay community posed in relation to blood donation. So you're actually wrong, Jim. I'm not an advocate of homosexuality. I don't promote homosexuality, but I have no problem with homosexuality. You are. Now, let's, stay, let's stick to the point, Jimmy, and let's talk about about the laws of blasphemy. Tell me why you believe they should be kept. At times, your show becomes very RTE. I okay. don't know who, who, whose format your show, but sometimes it comes very RTE in its attitude. But if you want, if you want to remove a law which which um, which protects people from insults, there are people out there, a very tiny minority of them, who will come on and, and they will take the Lord's name in vain. I wouldn't insult that atheist man there. Because he doesn't, because he, he doesn't believe in anything. How would you turn around and start insulting that man? He does believe in something. You can't insult people. If you want to remove the law which protects that, 
then you're going to run into problems. Well, hang on, Dan wants to say something there. Dan, go ahead. It's just always anti-Catholic. How is it anti-Catholic, Dan? Like, like it's not proportional. You won't, you won't flag off the Muslims as much as you You've said off. that about four times already today, so let's not say it again, all right? Because you're just getting boring now saying that. Yeah, I've like, told you the reason why people don't slag off Muslims or slag off Allah or the Prophet Muhammad is because, unfortunately, we have fundamentalists in the world. We have religious yes, fundamentalists who are quite happy to take somebody's life. People should be able to make a sat- satirical remark about Muhammad or about Allah if they really want to. The, the Muslims are quite entitled to disagree with it. Catholics don't make the women cover up in veils. But but in the, see, see what you're doing now. You're doing exactly the same thing as an atheist would do to a Catholic. What you're doing now is having a pop at a Muslim, uh, the Muslim religion, for no reason. Talking about atheists having a pop at Catholics, I haven't had any pop at Catholics. What I'm saying is that religious states promote religion supported by blasphemy laws. Atheist states would promote atheism. What I'm looking for is a secular state that, that doesn't promote either atheism or religion, that respects equally the human rights of all of its citizens, that has freedom of conscience, freedom of religion and belief, equality before the law, and freedom from discrimination. Okay, but let, me, let me ask you a question, because, Michael, uh, what about Jimmy's rights as a citizen of this country to have his religion protected by, say, the state broadcaster, because that's what his concern is, because, obviously, Orchie uh, acts on behalf of the state. So, in other words, that we don't have Tommy Tiernan up on a crucifix, we don't have the Sabbath a guy doing a skit about the confession box, or that his rights should be protected by the blasphemy law. Yeah, he, he has rights, his beliefs don't have rights, and that's the key distinction. Uh, we should protect individual people from harm uh, and, and from crime. We shouldn't protect ideas from criticism, no matter how controversial the, the, the criticism is. As long as the criticism is aimed at an idea rather than a person, then it, it is appropriate. One of the other big difficulties of blasphemy laws is they protect religious beliefs over non-religious beliefs. For example, Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor, who's the, who was un, until recently the senior Roman Catholic in, in Britain, told the BBC that atheists are not fully human. Now, if an atheist said that religious people, either Christians or Jews or Muslims, were not fully human, that would certainly be considered a, a serious offence under the likes of blasphemy laws. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, yet the blasphemy law doesn't cover this because religious people can say anything they like about non-religious people under the blasphemy law. It's only one way that, that religious beliefs are protected. OK, well, Jimmy, is that a fair point that you are protected as a citizen, but your beliefs are not and shouldn't be? Exactly. He's exaggerating a lot. I know lots of people who don't believe in religion or God. They don't call themselves atheists. This is only a trend that, that, that Mr. Nugent is going through, a relatively new trend. <laughs> I'm an atheist. Look at me. Yeah, I, it's, I'm, it's only a trend to I'm a vegetarian. I'm an atheist. <laughs> there, were no vegetar- there were no atheists in, 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 in the trenches in, in, in France. So. There's an, an atheist army organization within the don't take, army. Don't you talk about a circular state where everybody's rights are respected. What about the rights state, of the unborn child's state. life? Look, there's no point really in having a conversation if, if, if every time an issue is raised, you just skip off the fact that your point is being countered and move on to something else. Look, I have listened to you, and some things you say make common sense uh, over the years. And, and people like you, they make good common sense. Uh, what do you mean people know, like him? His type? People who have, have his beliefs. Have his the beliefs. People I don't think the word atheist, I presume, Niall. Yeah, well, his, your, your, your type, Michael. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I have me. absolutely no problem with atheists if they want if they believe what they want to believe. But when you say that you represent and you respect everybody's rights, what about the right to the unborn child to life? Because it is the rights of pregnant women that take precedence. What about the rights of the fathers? You see, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an endless piece of rope. What about the rights of the fathers? I, not- uh, Jimmy, I agree with you that it is an endless piece of rope, but we will decide that on the day that we have a referendum for the Eighth Amendment. Let's stick to the amendment we're talking about in the Constitution, which is the blasphemy laws. That's the one we want to deal with today. Stick to the Constitution as it was by the, by the founding fathers of this state. It was known no, by, as the by, by the Pope, yeah. Sorry. Our constitution was known as the rights of the world. Even the Libyans, the Americans, all drew from the Irish constitution. And so what do we do? Do we keep the same constitution for the next 300 years, 400 years? We get rid of this anti-Christ, atheist media in our country. It's going to happen, and the steps being taken already to set up Catholic, Catholic media. It has to happen. Well, there is, there is Catholic media. Well, there's Christian media. There's Spirit FM, isn't there? There's a radio station if, if for, for Christians in particular. No, there is a whole new... The Catholic Church is looking at a whole new radio station for Europe. Well, they already have one here in Ireland. There's a Christian radio station called Spirit FM, as far as I know. OK, listen, stay there with me if you can, Michael and Jimmy. I want to come to Ibrahim uh, straight after the break, uh, if I can. Niall Boylan. Real Talk Radio on Classic Hits 4FM.